Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev and this video is the working with nested JavaScript data masterclass. So the idea is one of the things I think is always one of the trickier things for people to get used to in the early stages of working with JavaScript. It's not just like what is an array or what is an object and I'm assuming you know those things. So if you haven't watched, uh, if you don't know what an object and array is, then I, I would recommend that you watch my JavaScript array masterclass or JavaScript object master class first before watching this video. Same thing with functions. But the purpose of this video is just like, what happens when these things are not, it's not just an array, but it's an array of objects, or it's an object with an array inside of it. Okay, um, how do you work with these sort of more complex nested data structures within uh, JavaScript and like understanding them? Okay, because it's really kind of understanding sort of the access notation. When do I use dot notation? When do I use square brackets? So forth. So um, first we'll talk about arrays. Okay, so I'll create a little file here, arrays.js, let me just start up a terminal. And we're just gonna talk about accessing things in an array and then like nested things in an array. Okay, so first we're just gonna have just an array. So const r equals one, two, three. So just to access a normal object in an array, I would just basically do the name of the array and use square brackets to say which index. So it'd be like, this would be zero, one, two, three, four, five. Cause again, it starts with zero. So in that case, if I want to access the three value in this array, that'd be zero, one, two. So I would put in the index of two and let's console log that. So you can see that I am logging the value of three. Okay. And that'd be node arrays.js. And you can see that gives us the value of three. Okay. Now what happens when you have an array inside of an array? Also referred to as a multi-dimensional array. Okay, so we'll say const r2, and we'll say something like one, two, three, four, five, six. That works. Okay, so you notice that really here, and actually there should be a comma right there, okay? This is an array that's inside that array, okay? So technically, the, the this is considered one item in the array, okay? So in that case, the trick to it is you have to first start with the outer array and figure out where the nested array is inside the outer array. So that'd be what, zero, one, two, three okay so the nested array is in the third index of the array so console.log and just to kind of bear that out we'll say r2 okay so it's again at index three because it's the fourth item so let's just start with that and now if i log that so if i log r3 the third index again so that's zero one two three Okay, and I console log that, you'll see that that is the array. So that nested array, that four, five, six array is at index three. So in that case, this accesses that nested array. So now what I wanna do is access something in the nested array. So we start from there. So I wanna, let's say I wanna access the five. So it'd be zero, one. So it's at the one index. So what I do is I put another square bracket <coughs> and you say one, okay. And so what's the nature of this? So the, the bottom line is this, whenever you, we can always access the next layer of a nested construct by just using the right notation. So since the R23 accesses the nested array, we can then just add another set of square brackets to access the index inside of that array and so forth. If there was another array in there, it would be another square brackets, another square brackets, another square brackets. Okay, whenever you hit an array, you can use square brackets to access the index. So now if I do this, I run this, I should get the five. Okay, so see there's the five. Okay, awesome. Now how about objects inside of an array? Okay, let's actually generate some objects. This is a great use for AI to get, you know, just sort of decent objects quickly. Okay, although, Google Chrome is being a little slow. So let's actually try something out here that I just installed. 
I haven't actually had a chance to really try yet, Cody. Okay. Uh, generate me, generate an array of objects. Okay, let's go fine, but let's try this out. Objects. Uh, with the properties of name and age. Okay. So we'll send that, see if it, what it generates for us. I should have, again, this is my first time actually using Kodi. It's another AI tool that you can kind of get setting up there. Okay, nice, that works. Oh, and it explains it too. That's pretty nice. Okay. Okay, so there, there is our array of objects, okay? So we have John, Jack, and Jane. Now, how do I access, let's say, an individual object, okay? So it's just each object is one element or one item in the array. So this is index 0, this is index 1, and this is index 2. So what would I do? I can just say console.log. If I want to access Jane, I could just say people 1 because one would be the second item in the array. And if I log that, that should give me the object that is Jane. So you can see right there, I get Jane. Okay. But what if I want to access Jane's age? Well, generally the properties of an object are accessed through dot notation. Okay. So I could use dot notation because again, th you always have to think about like, Hey, this actually represents the object. Like the idea is that this accesses the object because that's what happened. That's what I got back when I logged it. So that means I can then access it or treat it like an object going forward, which means I can use dot notation to access those inner properties. So I can say, hey, dot age. Okay. And now if I run that, see, I'm getting Jane's age. But objects have two ways for you to access properties. Not only can I use dot notation, okay, I can use square bracket notation. So I could also do use square brackets afterwards and then just type in the string of the key name. Okay, so this is gonna give me the same thing, but notice it's just a different way of accessing a property in an object. That just has to do with objects. You would know that if you watched my object masterclass. So you can see here, 25 and 25. Okay, nice. But you notice how, how basically I'm just going from one layer to the next. Okay, awesome. And the last one will be an array of functions, functions in an array. So for example, let's just say const r, okay, well, there we go. That works for me. So you see here we have an I, we have a number, a number as the first three elements of the array. And then the fourth element is an inline function. Okay, it's literally just a function that says hello world. What I could do is I can access that. I can say r3, because that's the array. Then I'm going to say, hey, what index in the array, which is the fourth index, which is index three. And since that's the function, so like if I were the console log that, if I were the console log that, you'll see that, hey, that's the function. Okay, see function anonymous. And then so that means to call the function, I just add a parentheses after the square brackets because I'm calling the function that's in that spot. And again, parentheses always call the function. And then you should see that log of hello world. But since it's a function that doesn't return a value, it's also going to log undefined because I'm logging the return value of this expression. So you see, I get hello world because we called the function. So when this function got called, we console logged hello world. But we also have to console log this expression. And this expression doesn't return anything because this function doesn't return anything. But the idea is that literally you would just access the item in the array and then you can just call it like any other function. Okay. At the end of the day, it's just functions just basically saying, Hey, here's what the function is. Here's the parentheses to just make it clear that I'm invoking or calling that function. Okay. So you can have arrays of functions. That's a thing you can do. Okay. So that's, that's arrays. Let's talk about objects now. Okay. So again, just a normal object. Okay, so we're just going to say const Alex equals name Alex Merced, age 38. That should be a number. Okay, and again, there's two ways we can access this. Okay, we can use dot notation, 
to access a property in the object. So I could say, hey, console.log alex.name, and I can use square bracket notation. Okay. And see, both of these are going to generally do the same thing. I'm accessing that particular property inside this object that we defined up here. Okay, so I can either pass it using square brackets and pass a string identifying the key or pass the key. Um, the, only the only real big difference here is that you have to use this if the key has any spaces in the name or if you don't know what the key is. So for example, there might be situations where you're dynamically passing a key in and then basically the string is stored inside of a variable. So you use the variable to determine the key, not really a topic for today's video. But that's the main thing is like if a key has a space in it, then you have to use this one. So now if I run that, so if I say node objects.js, you see that both of them give me back the same data. Okay. <clears throat> now let's say we take that object and we added an array inside of it. So we'll say hobbies. That works. Coding, gaming, movies. That's pretty accurate. Okay. So now I have this property that is an array. So we have an array inside the object. So accessing an array inside the object. Okay, I could just console log the array by saying, you know, alex.hobbies. I'm accessing the property and inside the property there's an array. So if I take a look at that console log, there's the array. But if I wanna access the things inside the array, I have to once again use um, the index notation. So I could say, hey, I want to access gaming. That's the second item. So the second index is usually one. Okay, so there we go. We see that I am using one. So it's going to take, so this accesses the array and this lets me access the individual item in the array. And there we go. So you see, I access that individual property gaming. Because again, these nested structures can get pretty complicated. Okay, um, let's see here. Okay, now let's say you have a another object in there. So like, here we go, we have address, perfect. I, I, I just knew. Okay, so you, let's say you have address and you want to access um, my address. Okay, again, I could console.log, so accessing an object inside of an object. Okay, if I do console.log alex.address, I'm going to access the whole object. Okay, so you see Alex at address is this address object. But if I want to access like city, okay, okay, then I would just use dot notation going down further because I'm just going down the next layer. So the idea is like you're kind of like going down layers, kind of like inception. Okay, so if I do this, you see there I access Brooklyn because it's Alex at address at city. Okay, so that one's pretty straightforward. And again, if there was another object in there, it would just be dot, 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 dot. So square brackets for arrays, dots for objects. Now, what if I had a function in there? Okay. So, perfect. Okay, this thing just knows where I'm going. Thank you, GitHub Copilot, for reading my mind. Um, greet function. Okay, so if I want to access a function, console.log, if I just did Alex accessing a function inside of an object, again, console.log. If I just did alex.greet, not with the parentheses, that accesses, that shows me that there's a function there. Like I'm accessing the value. Okay, so you see there's a function there, function greet. But what if I wanna invoke that function? Again, you always need the parentheses. So then I use the parentheses. Okay. And there we go. We see, we see the hello world get called. But again, since we're console logging the result of the function, this function doesn't return a value. So we see here the function has no return value. So that's why we get this undefined log because we're logging the result of the function, which is nothing. But the function itself is logging hello world, which is why we see the hello world here. Okay. Cool. Okay, so that's like accessing nested stuff in an object. Okay, how about functions? Okay. Okay, so let's see here, accessing a function's return value. Okay, so just say const return num equals a function that just literally returns the number one. 
okay, we're going to keep it real simple. I'm just write some simple arrow functions. Okay, so this is literally just a function that returns the number one. Okay, if I just do console.log, you just call the function and you're going to get the return value. That's what you log, that's what you get when you log the function being invoked. Okay, so like if I just log the name of the function, here we're just accessing the function, and here we're accessing the return value. So again, you want to ask yourself, what are you trying to do? Uh, am I trying to access the function itself? Because maybe I'm passing it as a callback to a callback function or something. Or am I trying to access the function's return value, which means I want to call the function so that way the function plays out its code block and gives me back any value that is returned. And again, since this is an arrow function and there's no curly brackets after the arrow, it's an implicit return. It's implied to be returned. So I didn't use the return keyword because you don't have to when there's no curly brackets for an arrow function. I can just basically, anything after the arrow is automatically returned. One of the nice things about arrow functions. Okay. So now if I run this, node functions.js, you see when I just log the name of the function, I'm just accessing the actual function that's in there. I'm not using it, I'm accessing it, which is, you know, I might want to pass it to somewhere else and not use it, just pass it to somewhere else to be used later. That's why I have that ability to do that. Because um, the function itself is actually an object. It's a special type of object in, in JavaScript. While when I do this and I invoke the function, I'm not getting the function back, I'm getting the function's return value back, which is we get back one. Okay, but what if the function's returning to you like, other stuff. So for example, let's say, you know, accessing a, I don't know, accessing an array returned by a function. So here we say we we'll have a function called return r, like return array, which is going to equal that. It just is just a function that returns an array. Okay. So now if I console.log return r, again, I'm just accessing the function. And if I console log return R with the parentheses, I'm going to access the return value. So again, if I play those out, you see here, when I log just return R, that's just the function. When I invoke return R and log the result, I get the whole array. So now if I just want to log one item in that array, okay, it would be console.log return R. And let's say we want to access the number four, which is, let's see here, that's zero, one, two, three, that's going to be at the third index. So that's going to be at the third index. So you see index three, because again, square brackets, well, since this gives us the array, and how do we know that when we logged it by itself, what did it give us back the array? So that means going forward, I could use square brackets to detail what the next step, whereas my next step going down the ladder is. Okay, so now when I do that, I should get back the number four. And you see it basically when I did this, I got back the number four. Okay, how neat is that? So I can always go down deeper. Even with functions, I can keep going down deeper if I understand sort of mechanically how this is working. When I exercise, or when I call the function, okay, I'm gonna get back a value. And if that value allows me to go deeper, I can continue to go deeper. So for example, <clears throat> accessing a object returned by an array. So let's say const return obj equals. Now here, this one you have to do is a little bit more complicated. The reason being is that because curly brackets use, or actually you could just do that. So because we don't want JavaScript to confuse the curly brackets for a code block, because again, I could be doing like this and then write some code. What you have to do is you have to wrap in parentheses. Because the parentheses, anytime you wrap anything in parentheses, you're saying, hey, that is one value. Okay. When this, you just use arbitrary parentheses, you're just saying, Hey, like this, this is all one thing. Okay. This is one value, not a code block. It's a value, a singular value. So when I put the, when I put the object inside the curly brackets, I can still use an implied return. I can still use an implied return even with an object. Okay. So that's the reason I'm wrapping that in parentheses. Okay, if I didn't wrap it in parentheses, then I would have to use an extra set of curly brackets and I'd have to do something like this. So I'd have my curly brackets for my code block, then there's my object, 
And then I, since it's no longer an implied return, I have to use the return keyword. Okay. And that would be the same thing. Okay. I'll leave it like that because it's just a little bit more explicit for the moment. But basically, we have a function that's going to return an object. So let's go through the same return. If I were, if I log the function, I'm just going to get the function. If I log the result of invoking the function, we'll see the return value. And then I can access a property of the return value from there. <clears throat> okay, so you can see here, I log the function, and I just see that it's just a function. Then when I log the, I invoke the function and log the result, I see that I get the return value, which is the object. But then when I use dot notation to go even deeper, I get that name property of the object. Okay, so you can see kind of how we can access sort of deeply nested things. Okay, cool. So now let's do something complex. Let's just generate a really complex object. So you can see some more complex variations. So I'm going to use Google bar for this, so bar.google.com. Okay, so I'm going to say, hey, uh, generate me me a complex JavaScript object with at least six nested layers. Okay. That way we get a nice quick big object really quickly. Okay, so here we have a nice complex object, with lots of stuff going on. So we're going to use that as our example. Okay. And again, AI is very helpful when you know what to ask. That's the thing. Like, I always like to make always like caveat this when people want to use AI. AI, when you're coding, is only useful if you know how to code because if, then you're not going to know what to ask it. If you're learning how to code, then it's useful in under, helping it in like understanding code. Like if you have a code snippet that you wrote or that you see somewhere online that you don't fully understand, putting that into the AI and saying, okay, can you explain this code for me to help you deeper understand that code? That would, I think, would be the bigger use in those early stages. But you see this is a big, complex object. So let's try to access... Let's try to access this street address right here. Okay, we want to access that. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. So first, I got to start off with the object. So I say console.log complex object. Now we have to figure out what the next layer is. So this at so this street address is part of this address object, and this address object is part of based on the way it lines up, is based on this user object. Okay, so then basically I have to first go inside the user object. So it's like user dot user. And then when I take a look inside the user object, I see there's ID, name, email, address. So the next layer would be address. And then inside the address object, when I'm looking at this, um, address, there's street. Okay, and then we can access street. Okay, you see, I'm just going one layer down, one layer down, one layer down. Okay, oops, wrong file. Node complex. And see, I, I'm able to log the value of Main Street. Now, let's see if we see anything else. Is there an array anywhere in here? Ah, okay, so here we have the subscriptions array. So let's access this 199.99 price. Okay, so this 199.99 price is part of this object which is the second element of this array. And this array is the subscriptions property of the user object. Yeah, okay, so basically it's gonna be like complex object, or oh, first is console log. <coughs> complex object dot subscriptions, so that's the array. Okay, and again, we said it was the third item, so that'd be like two. Okay, and then that item is going to have a price. Okay, but you have to kind of like read through this and practice it, like to get used to sort of working with these sort of deeply nested structures. So again, recommend just using like something like Bard to generate a complex object and practice accessing those different properties on it. Okay, and I made a mistake here. Cannot read properties. So when you see this, so you see like this is a very typical error when you're accessing these deeply nested uh, objects because what happens is that I miscalculated, okay? 
so when I, we take a look at this, we go to subscriptions and I say, hey, I want to access ID two, but I was wrong. There is no third item. This is actually the second item in the array. So technically the third item, which is index two would be undefined. So technically this is accessing undefined, which has no properties. And whenever you, in JavaScript, whenever you try to access a property of undefined, that triggers an error because basically it's saying, hey, that's not what you think it is. So the issue isn't that I use price. The issue isn't the price. Like most people get really caught up when they see this error and they think the problem is somewhere with me trying to access price. No, the problem is that this is undefined. The problem is this. Okay, so what I need to do is go, which we already kind of figured out. We saw that, oh wait, there is no third item in this array. So really what I meant was the index of one, which is a second item. And now if I run this again, I get the 199.99. Okay, so hopefully this gave you a better idea of how to work with nested data in JavaScript. Again, if it was arrays or objects or functions, it would just kind of go forth like that. Um, this generally is going to be very typical when you're make, when you're reaching out for third party data from an API or from a database, because you're grabbing generally oftentimes, you know, lists, arrays of objects that are stored, uh, that are the data that you're going to work with. And oftentimes those objects can be very complicated from third party APIs. Okay. So you have to fetch the data and then kind of figure out how to access those individual properties in the data. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev. Leave a like, subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Have a great day and enjoy.